and I'm Charles Stone, and I'm the Chair of the Corrections Information Council in Washington, D.C. I'm also a member of the League of Women Voters, which is why I'm here before you today. I also would have to add that I'm, I am an employee with the D.C. Office on Human Rights. It's my pleasure to be here today, and we're going to be talking to you all about voting while incarcerated and why it's important to vote while incarcerated. Good afternoon. My name is Robert Dent, and once again, I'm here to help out and make sure that everyone that's incarcerated know that they have a right to vote and that how important it is for them to vote because one thing about voting, we cannot change anything without it. I work for NARC, which is the National Association for the Advancement of Returning Citizens, as well as uh, Federal City Recovery, it's a drug program, and I do all my community work inside of Ward 8 and Ward 7. And uh, once again, I'm going to let my colleague uh, take over from here. So the question became, why is voting important? And I'm going to kind of sum it up real, you know, um, you know I'm going to lay it out real simple. You know, um, it was important enough for several of our ancestors to die to put their life on the line and die. You know, um, I can't name, you know, and we only see the names that, you know, we familiar with, but they are not the only people that died for the right for us to vote right now. So I can't say it no stronger than that. You know, um, if, if you're not in tune with that, you know, um, what our role and our job is with the League of Women Voters, we're going to come to your institution. We're going to make ways to get to where you are at, and we'll be able to share more information. You know, but at the gist of it, this is how you know government is run. You know, um, every piece of legislation that's put in the books in the District of Columbia is passed. You know, by way of the vote, everything from the. Uh, Something as important as creating a um, residential reentry center in the district has to be voted on. You know, um, so as much as you know, making sure that your, you know, your your children have enough food to eat, you know, um, via different social programs must be voted on. So you have an opportunity while incarcerated to have an impact on those decisions. Mm. Your vote can make a difference. <clears throat> so often, elections in D.C. are decided by just a few hundred votes. As of 2023, 96% of D.C. adult population was registered to vote. About 50% of the D.C. voters are black, 31 are white, and 6% are Latino, and 13% is undetermined. So you would think that black residents would have the voting power to address the housing, the food, the safety concerns that are important to us here in Washington, D.C. But that's not the case. The highest voters turnout was 29% higher in prominent white Ward 3 than in Ward 7 and 8 in 2022 general election. This is important when we know that on occasion, D.C. council races are sometimes won by only 2,000 votes or less. Robert White won his seat in 2016 by 1,794 votes. Can you imagine if 2,000 of those votes came for returned citizens or incarcerated citizens? We could have made a difference, gentlemen. Absolutely, and, and as, as uh, Mr. Dan is saying, numbers count. At the end of the day, that's where the rubber meets the road at, and that's numbers. We're currently in a city that uh, right now there's probably, you know, 700, 725,000, you know, residents of the District of Columbia. And, you know, what history tells us is that out of that, maybe not even 10% vote. Of the total, you know. Um, so, you know, uh, when, when, when we're talking about elections that, in some cases, are uh, won by 
two, three hundred votes, imagine the impact that you can have. We just uh, yesterday left uh, another historic um, swearing-in ceremony where in the District of Columbia at the Department of Corrections, uh, there was another swearing-in for an ANC member. You know, um, and it's historic because you know, um, in the district, most of you all know, we have advisory neighborhood council uh, members who represent uh, typically two to 3,000 people within a ward, right? And, you know, to have a representative of the Department of Corrections is, is an amazing thing. And again, it's, it's a historic thing because in some places they have aldermen's you know, but I can assure you, no place that I'm aware of in the uh, in the country are uh, there uh, representatives that are incarcerated. You know, um, and I and I can also uh, tell you that in most places throughout the country, with the exception of Maine, Vermont, and Puerto Rico, you don't even have a right to vote while incarcerated. There are some places with misdemeanors and pretrial individuals can vote, and in most of those cases, there's not a system in place to allow it to happen. So we have to take advantage of this. So as we uh, end, what we want, want, want you all to understand and to know and to be ready for is that we have a uh, election coming up. Let me just go over some of the most important things that I know that's probably troubling some of you guys. You can register from the BOP, all right, with no question. We have emails set up that Mr. Thornton will talk to you about later on in the program. All right, you are at least 16 years of, old, of age. You are or were a resident of the District of Columbia. This means that you live in the D.C. for the 30 days prior to your current incarceration. A judge has not ruled that you are incapable of voting. You do not claim residence or the right to vote in another U.S. state or territory. Ask your family members to send you a voter registration form or contact the D.C. Board of Election. Now, that's what Mr. Thornton will get to at the end of this. We have set up emails and uh, phone numbers and people that you can contact to make sure that your reg voters registration form are updated. Uh, Mr. Thorne? Yes, sir. So, as he was saying, we definitely have a primary coming up June 4th. In order to be able to vote in that primary, your registration must be done before April the 8th. So, if the other most important thing, if you need to change your mailing address, you can contact outreach specialists at dcboe.org. I'm going to hold this up. This is the information for changing your mailing address. This is the information for the upcoming primary. And this is all the information that you can take to your uh, specialist, your reentry specialist, so that you can get your ballot and participate in this primary coming up in June. Thank you very much.